Hello. Please listen to me. Thank you. Okay. Comrades Power. Yes, let's give her a chance. She's one of us. Thank you so much. Go ahead, thank my sister. You. I'm not asking this for the girls. I'm asking this for us. Hello. My name is Mary. I'm in the University of Nairobi. And uh, this is a great topic. And I'm glad to be here, honestly. Oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> um, I believe we are the products of what happened to us. I believe the society today and how we semen is how our parents brought up to semen, right? We are a product of nature and nature, what nature does. And thank you for apologizing, but how would you apologize if you didn't know better? You didn't know better and that's why you didn't do better. But my question is, how can we teach these men to change their mindset? Because this is a mindset thing. Most men don't agree to cry. Most men don't agree to express their feelings. And this is because it started from an early age when you cry and your mom is like, Usilia, wabe ni mwanaume, and everything like that. So it's deeply encoded into our mindset. And how can you change mindset? Thank you, my sister. I'd, let's celebrate her. I'd let her excellency to respond to those questions. Thank you so much. Mary, you asked about the mindset of a, of a boy, and it is true, culturally, the boy child has been brought to only know what not to do. One, they must not show emotions, they must not cry, they must not go to the kitchen, they not, no, must not act like sissies, they must not act like this. The father will see them and they will tell them not to do things like their mother and all that. But that is why I apologize and I said we are going to speak and we are going to speak to the young mothers and young parents to be able to bring up the boy child who has feelings and who has a heart. If he wants to cry, let him cry. Show him how to even talk so that he, when he grows up, he will have a venting place. Because, and also I am asking, and breeding with the young men. Create groups where you can be able to talk to one another as men. And we are also coming up with mentorship and, uh, seminars and conferences. We will have them across the 47 counties so that we can come and speak to them, mentor you, and also mentor those others who are in primary so that they can change their mindset. There is nothing so big of being uh, a roof and being told you are a hero and a hero that is dying inside. It is better even to be a sissy and live rather than to be called all those things and then you end up in a grave. In, that gra in those graves are uh, great potential that has been lost. We don't want to lose any one of you because of these things and that is why I am here. We are not only doing the rehabs, we are also starting very serious uh, mentorship uh, programs. Thank you so much. I have noted that. We here, you get uh, a chance from the upstairs. I can see you and I can feel you. <laughs> Ogutu has asked um, about corporates and what is going on there. And I think it is important for people to know. You can report, but I know now th that is where the problem is. Because if you go to report to the police about some of these things, they may not be able to handle. But that's why we are saying we are coming up with NACADA and the others with a helpline where you can actually be able to comfortably send your, um, your help uh, to ask for help. And we also will have lawyers. I think one of the people who are in my office, she's from FIDA, so don't think that I've forgotten about women. So 
anyone, whether it's a woman or a man, and you are being molested, it is time. Those interns, please call. Sometimes even it is also good if you can uh, call the university. And I'm very sure they would get to us and we'll see jointly what we can do. I'm not saying that I can champion everything and do everything, but I promise to do something about it. Obutu, you can see my chief of staff. We will pay for your school fees. Uh, for some time, women uh, have not been given, they have always been excluded. You go, for example, for uh, you want uh, a bank loan, for example. Uh, the first thing you will be asked is a lot of questions. Who are you? Where do you come from? Who is your husband? Where is your chief? And those kind of things. And that is why our excellence fell through what you call double banking. That women need to be included. And such questions should be what? Should be reduced to the minimum. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. That uh, you'll be asked a lot of questions. Even if you don't have a um, say, you'll be asked what you say. And it's not your mistake. Maybe you say a little that is not your mistake. So I think that is actually why we are actually saying that you should be able to have that, um, the, uh, what you call the financial inclusion. And that's actually what we are actually uh, doing with the uh, women uh, economic empowerment uh, through table banking. We have about 11,000 women groups across the country. We have uh, now uh, around uh, almost uh, 39, 40 uh, counties uh, within the country. And we have almost 200,000 uh, uh, women who are actually involved in the women economic environment, the table banking. And I'm sure the, the women, the young ladies who are here, I encourage you to join uh, groups so that you can also increase the, the base and actually have the, what we are actually talking about, uh, um, the, the approach, the bottom-up approach. And therefore, we, uh, we really improve our economy. We are also saying it is a high time now that we do business. Uh, we have many, these groups should also be able to uh, have business from one community to the other, one county to the other, one town to the other, and we are actually doing that through Women Economic Empowerment. We have those groups I have mentioned, and they are actually working very closely. I want also to say this, that out of that, we have serious uh, revolving funds within those uh, uh, tables. And therefore, I want to call upon uh, the women of this country to join us, just as they join other groups, to ensure that this is actually one of the uh, way of actually uh, improving our economy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, women economic environment, we also have capacity building. We are also increasing the livelihoods of uh, uh, women. Uh, and I know Charity, who is here from the forest, know that we have uh, women who are involved in what we call the three nurseries. That is actually uh, where the, the nature uh, enterprises. We are also having uh, forests like this across the country. We are uh, beekeeping. We know, Your Excellency, that this country has a high potential of actually producing high-quality honey that can actually be supplied to the country and can also be uh, exported. We want to increase that base by actually having our women uh, through those groups uh, doing that kind of a job. Your Excellency, uh, I'm also... Uh, informing, especially the people who are meeting us for the first time, Mama are doing good, that uh, we have what you call environment and climate action. And today, uh, one of the things we are doing today is actually to bring awareness on the issues to do with awareness of uh, climate change. Climate change has been a reality. It has been a, a, an issue uh, that is actually uh, causing a lot of harm, not only in Kenya, but across the world. We are actually seeing uh, in Kenya, for example, that in the last uh, almost three or four months, we have seen almost six million Kenyans actually facing starvation because of the uh, problem of uh, a drought. And I think as a country and as uh, uh, one of the initiatives in the office of the First Lady and uh, through Mama Doing Good, we have actually come up with the uh, actions uh, to do. And one of it is actually to do afforestation programs. And uh, Your Excellency, today with the Ambassador and everybody here, we have actually seen that we can be able to add value to actually plant the trees across the country. One is that His Excellency the President has actually talked about increasing our forest cover from the current 
uh, 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 forest cover from the uh, current 8.83 to actually uh, going to 30 percent by the year 2032. And that cannot be done only by the government. It will be done by everybody. And as uh, uh, mother, uh, mama doing good, we are actually going to ensure that we also participate in planting uh, more trees uh, across the country. We have our own percentage that we want to plant uh, with the uh, stakeholders, with friends like AAR, with friends like the cyclists who are here today, the friends of Karura, and many others who are actually going to